Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Chris Cooper, known as the Channel Guy Trader, and I'm reporting to you live from Wall Street Trading's office down in sunny South Florida, Miami. Today's date is Saturday, April the 20th, 2013, and here is this week's weekend review brought to you by WallStreetTrading.com. I want to first start by taking a look at the S&P 500 monthly charts. We're going to take a look at the weekly and the daily charts of the market, a couple of key stocks, and of course some key sectors, and see how we're looking at uh, going into next week's trading. So let's go ahead and start by taking a look at the SPY monthly chart. One thing that you want to make sure you take note of here is that volume has been declining uh, since really since November. You can take a see down here at the bottom of the chart. You can see volume has been declining as we push up into these uh, multi-year uh, highs. All right, back all the way back from 2000 to 2008, and we're currently at those same levels back now here in 2013, pushing up to those levels with light volume. As you guys know, this is a monthly chart, so we still have about a week and a half left here until the month closes out. So I just wanted to show you guys so you guys could touch base with that chart on your system and put it together with your analysis. Uh, taking a look at the weekly chart here, let me zoom this back out. On the weekly chart, you can see we're still in this little upward channel that we've been in since the lows that we made back here in November of 2011. So you draw your little key trend line, draw your little parallel trend line from this little key inflection point right here. These are your three points that you're using. All right, and you can see we've we've been in that little uptrend channel for the past, uh, you know, for about a year and a half or so now. And if you take a look and you draw this little key trend line right here, you can see we're just about holding above that 50% trend line. So just about holding above the 50% trend line of the range here. So if we can continue to hold above this, I would say the bull, the ball is still in the bull's court. At the same time, the market action, the short term has been getting a little bit choppy. That shows you that there's a little bit of volatility, a little bit of fear coming into the market here. So we got to gauge that fix, which we'll be taking a look at here shortly to see how, um, you know, just kind of get a gauge of sentiments because one thing that we did see last week, or let's just say, uh, not last week, sorry, this week on Thursday, was that uh, we got a nice little follow through on the VIX. Usually when the VIX pops up, you know, the next day it sells off for the majority of the day, but we didn't see that this week. We actually saw some buyers coming back to the VIX to buy the VIX. So <clears throat> the levels that you want to take a look at on the uh, SPY weekly chart here, you can see we've been in this little range here for the past one, two, actually, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six weeks or so. Last week we tried to break out. That failed. We came right back inside the range and we closed inside the range. So what does that mean? Anybody that bought the SPY above 156.62, all right, if they're not out of the position yet, they're currently in a losing position, all right. And if we continue, if we continue to get some weakness in the market, in the markets, and we sell off, um, those people are going to be feeling some pain and they may start to empty out their positions, sell their positions, and then we can see a nice little pullback, possibly back down towards this 152 level. At the same time, if we had these dip buyers that have been trying to come in the market and buy the market back up, we could see this little back and forth action, which really just tells you there's a lot of indecision right now, and you just really want to trade light, you know, manage your risk accordingly, and uh, at the same time, there's nothing wrong with going into cash if you don't know what to do at this at this point in time. So let's go ahead and zoom in on the uh, daily chart so we can get some better levels to work off of here. Taking a look at the daily chart, you can see a lot of volume has been coming into the sell side. You take a look at the bottom of the screen, take a look at the volume. All right, we've been having some nice volume, but it has been coming to the sell side, which is a little bit interesting. All right on the little BS float that we had to the top side from the jobs gap down, that they squeezed a lot of the participants out the market. They were trying to short the market on that bad number. They squeezed them out, and then, like you saw in the uh, weekly chart here that I just showed you, told you guys, all right, and anybody that's long above this 156.84 is currently stuck in a losing position. So as long as we continue to hold below 156.84, I would I would have to assume that we're going to try to you know trend lower to sideways. You got the nice little downward move right here. If we trade sideways a bit and we're below this key dump, key level right here, and we start breaking down uh, below 153.22. Look for some sell side action. At the same time, if we get back above this key 156.84 level, and we break back above it and then consolidate a bit on top of it we could be looking for a move back up towards these highs so right now is we're at a point in the markets right now where you really want to sit where you really want to sit back and watch the market to see what uh, direction it wants to take us and try not to do too much levels you want to watch in the SPY in the short term this uh, 153 22 level which comes with this little inflection point that we have right here 153 22 
Uh, we broke above it, so it's acting as support now. Support, support, and on Thursday we came down towards that 150, 153.22 level, and it acted as support as well. And we're currently sitting on top of the 50-day simple and exponential moving average on the daily chart. To the top side, 156.84. To the bottom side, 153.22. Those are your key levels that you want to watch here in the short term, and you want to look for a break and hold above or break and hold and or break and hold below. All right, but in the meantime, they could just chop us around between these two ranges here, um, between these two levels here for the for the next week or so. We'll have to uh, pay close attention to see what they want to do. Uh, so let's go and take a look at the uh, triple Q, starting off with the monthly chart. As you guys recall, I've been mentioning the fact that we're at the 50% retracement level from the tech bubble sell-off that happened back here in 2000 all the way to 2002. We tried to break past that 50% retracement level back here in September of last year and we were not able to we pulled back and now we're trying to come back at those levels again but in all reality IBM came out with some uh, with their earnings reports and it was not good at all the stock got clobbered Google came out with their earnings report after pulling back for a cup for a month or so and looks like they liked those numbers we'll take a look at those charts when we get into our stock section of the video but levels you want to watch on the triple Q's based off this monthly chart if you're a long term or your intermediate term trader you really want to watch this key 7152 level or so if we can break above that level and hold we'll be back above that 50 percent retracement of the big sell-off that we had back in 2000 2000 to 2002 alright and um, you want to watch that key 68 level let's go and take a look at the weekly charts let's get some more uh, better levels here for our intermediate term and short term traders alright on the weekly chart you can see we've been holding this nice little base at 67 since the start of the year I mean every time we actually dip below that level it's been getting bought up bought up bought up but at the same time every time we try to break out and then we consolidate we just do a little shake out same thing here we try to break out last week we had, we had a nice little strong candle that we did a nice little shake out back down towards 67 and they bought it right back up if we can build a nice little bid at this uh, 68 level to the point where we don't get any more shakeouts below that level and we start holding a higher bid say like around 69 that will be a good sign All right, but at the, at, at, the, uh, at the current point we're at right now 68 is a key level to watch we, and then you have this key 70 level taking a look at the daily chart that rising bear wedge is in play you can see we got to close below that level that key trend line on Thursday on Friday they open us right back up and close us right back above 68 um, if we continue to hold above 68 and we break above Thursday's highs you want to look for a move back up towards 69.10 if we can get back above 69.10 and we hold above 69.10 that means that all this action right here will be two separate shakeouts that happened over a two week time span and some shorts could be trapped down here and we could get a nice a real nice breakout possibly back towards these levels so there's a lot of interesting things going on right now in the market again we want to see how they set up so right now the best things to trade light um, don't put too much risk on and um, let's see which way this they want to take the market here so the key levels to watch in the short term on the triple Q is you really want to watch this 67 level if we can hold above 68 that'll be pretty good then you really want to watch the 69 level above 69 you want to watch 70 all right let's go ahead and take a look at the IWM the Russell 2000 starting off with the uh, monthly chart the Russell 2000 is the leading index out there right now along with the Dow Jones followed by the S&P and then um, the Nasdaq which is a uh, which is lagging right now the other indices IWM trading sideways right now with support on the monthly around 8966 resistance this key 95 level you go back and take a look at the weekly here in the weekly you can see we're starting to develop a little range here between 94 81 and 90 if we uh, break below 90 and hold you want to expect some sellers to come in and probably get a nice little pullback back down towards I would say 86 or so but if we hold above 90 we see a bid hold you want to watch for the top side above 94 uh, to 94 81 taking a look at the daily chart all right on Thursday I mentioned the fact that we got to be careful trying to short the market on Friday um, because we had this nice little pivot support from back here in February on February 25th and then we had a nice little correction uh, on Monday and we pulled all the way back down to that level again right here at 89 and we held alright if you guys have not 
seen any of the apps the bell market summary videos you can find them on the website wallstreettrading.com on the upper right hand side you have the my wall street tv tab which is where we keep our videos at that's our video archive or you can just go to the youtube channel subscribe to the youtube channel my wall street tv and you can find all the videos there but in thursday's video i mentioned the fact to be careful going short on friday for the fact we was at some some uh, decent support from that little inflection point at the same time on friday on the desk i was told the guys to be careful because we didn't have any uh, economic news coming out so it was expecting a light volume day with the light volume day you usually get a a, a light float up so in the short term the levels you want to watch is 89 we break if we continue to hold above 89 and we break over to say 91 look for a move up towards 92 and uh, remember this 92.69 is a key level of resistance to watch from this inflection point and anybody that's long above 92 and 69 right now they are in a losing position all right they're pretty much in a trapped losing position i should say right because they bought above this key inflection point for the breakout they've been sitting in that position for a matter of one two three you know four weeks or so with it not gig giving them any type of returns and now they're actually in a losing position so if we get any more selling they may come to the party to start selling their shares that they're selling at a loss and then once we get the breakdown below 89 we'll have new participants coming into the market to try to short the market because we're breaking below this pivot point so it could get pretty interesting next week we'll have to wait and see again um, they may try to chop us around next week before we get any type of uh, break down or move back up with some nice volume behind it showing that buyers are trying to come back in the market to buy this dip so we'll again we'll wait and see how that sets up what else do we want to take a look at here? So let's go and take a look now at the uh, dollar index. The dollar index is still holding above that key 82 level. We had a nice little follow through day on Friday after breaking this nice little downtrend that we've been in for the past three weeks. All right, did a little shakeout below 82, and now we're trying to break out of this little um, little bull flag that you have right here. A little minor bull flag. It's only one candlestick that kind of was a pause candle and gave you the signal candle for a move high which was a trigger from Wednesday's candle that big uh, expansion candle we had there so we'll see again we have this little upward trend line that we broke out of this little upward channel that we broke down out of so sometimes when you break down out of that uh, when you break down or out of a channel you usually get a back test of that key trend line the back test would be this trend line right here right which would mean that the dollar could rally up towards 83.25 all right, putting it back into this little area, which should act as like a little triple top, possibly if that was to happen, it was to get rejected. All right, just one scenario that that will that could play out. Remember, you always want to have your scenarios planned out, different scenarios that you think could take place. So, if it does start to show that it could play out, you could um, you know participate and kind of anticipate a little bit to be ahead of the crowd. Uh, so we'll be gauging that to see how the dollar trades going into uh, next week trading, next week's trading earlier in the week. <clears throat> what else uh, let's take a look at the weekly chart of the dollar the weekly chart of the dollar is still in this little resistance band all right you can see resistance right here resistance in that area resistance in this area right here we pulled back right we pulled back acted as resistance we pulled back we pulled back there we pulled back there and now we broke back above it this time if we were to consolidate above it like we are right now but this key 81 half level and then we break out that would be pretty interesting and um you know we'll have to gauge the market as you guys know when the dollar is strong the market's usually weak and the euro is usually weak as well all right euro and the markets have a positive correlation and the dollar and the markets have an inverse correlation all right you guys want to make sure you keep that in mind and that you know that because that's how it's been working out for the past couple years or so all right um what else do we want to take a look at let's go ahead and take a look at that euro dollar chart I just want to go to the daily chart with you guys on this one here. <clears throat> the daily chart, we're trading in a range between 130 and 132. If we break below 130 and we hold, look for a move back down. I would say back down towards these lows of 128. And if we break over 132, look for a move back up towards, I would say, 133, possibly 134. But for the past uh, 10 sessions or so, this thing has been trading sideways. All right. And again, this is another gauge that you can use. <clears throat> this is another tool that you can use to kind of gauge the market and see, okay, wh when are we going to get a nice little big uh, 
move uh, you know a big expansion move to the downside or a big expansion move to the top side use the US dollar the euro you know the VIX you and then and then use the levels use that all together and you get a good sense of when there's a time to you know put a big position on or when there's a time to take a you know a trade off or the case may be for whatever side that you're leaned on right now but uh, that's how it's looking the euro dollar it's going to take a look at the commodities starting off with gold starting off with gold all right gold had a nice little move on Friday closed up 14 and a half all right and right now we're retracing back into the declining 8 EMA on the daily time frame uh, that level that we held down there was 1350 an ounce and if we can get over I would say 1450 and we start holding a base above 1450 uh, we could possibly get a move back up towards 1550 but the way that they've been grinding gold up makes it kind of tricky to try to enter that position there unless you bought like the uh, second day after it showed you that it was going to try to stabilize down here a bit all right in other words if you bought on I would say Tuesday a little filler size that would have been good but now trying to buy on uh, on Friday or on Monday okay it's going to be a little bit more tricky it's going to be a little bit trickier because it could, they could pull it right back down towards 1350 and possibly break lower. I mean, right now, we have not been trading gold. Um, there's other sectors and other stocks that are in play that trade much cleaner. So we're staying away from the gold. But at this point in time, gold's getting a little bounce from the crazy sell-off action that it had last week. And um, we can possibly get a bounce towards those levels that I discussed here. Taking a look at the weekly chart of gold, which I should have started off with first. Um, there was some support down here at that 1313 level where it bounced off of. But the next main level of support you got to get from the monthly chart, and that is until like I would say around 1250. All right, and that would be coming from this little consolidation breakout that we had right here, taking us back down towards 1250. We break below 1250, and then you have this 1200 area. But I don't know, you have some gold bulls out there that they're like, oh, the you know this is just uh, deleveraging going on or this is uh, deflation you have some people calling it deflation deleveraging you have some people you know talking about that the European countries are selling their gold such as Cyprus uh, what else what other things have I heard out there this week you have um, you know you have some people saying this is this is the government or the Fed or whatever trying to shake out the weak hands so they could pick it up uh, you know I, I have been hearing that there's a lot of uh, demand for the physical physical asset of gold and not like the GLD or the paper ETF stuff or, you know the, the ETFs are, you know, people are wanting to buy the uh, the actual metal alright which um, is above the spot price if I'm not mistaken alright so let's go ahead and take a look now at uh, silver starting off with SLV Right, silver, ever since it broke down this little dollar range here between 27.50 and 28.50, it's gotten smacked down here. All right, it's trading right now in the range between 23 and 22. A little dollar range, and if we break above 23 and hold, you can expect some gap fill action. If we break below 22 and hold, expect some more sell action. You really want to just work off of those levels because these little range plays are the easiest trade setups out there because you just have to go in them with the mentality if we hold above the level then what's in, you know if it's been trading sideways and we hold above a key level of resistance most likely the scenario is going to be to the top side if we hold below the level since it's been trading sideways most likely the scenario is to the downside all right that's how that's looking if you take a look at the weekly chart weekly chart broke below all this key long-term support that we've been holding for the past two years this key level on this uh, key level on the SLV was 26. All right, and you can see we're below 26. The next real level of support now, I would say, isn't all the way down here until like around 20, which comes from this little level that we had back here in 2008. Right here from the prior resistance should now act as support on this side. So if we get some more selling pressure in the SLV, you want to watch the 20 level, and then we take a look at the monthly chart. And you can see where that level comes into play right there at 20. Let's go and take a look at copper. Copper futures here. Um, copper futures, they have been breaking down. All right, again, we've mentioned 
that if we were to hold below 353, look for some selling pressure. That's, that has happened already now. And now holding below 330, we had some more selling pressure, which was the bottom of the range. Now we're at the bottom of this little, cha of this little channel right here, so we could get some, uh, some little short-term buying pressure, some buyers trying to come in here since we've been selling off since uh, February or so. Uh, February the 5th was the top of the copper market for the, for the year. And now we sold off all the way down here at 315, coming from 378. All right, so in the short term, copper is a little bit oversold. Could get a bounce, but right now, of course, all the precious metals are weak across the board. Not a sector you want to be uh, involved in. All right, and just give you a prime example. Take a look at FCX. FCX is a stock that we've been talking about that has been pretty weak. Um, earlier in the year, I mentioned the fact that it was in a head and shoulders pattern on the weekly time frame, with a 30 level being the uh, neckline. And now we have the breakdown with a lot of volume coming in here near the bottom of the chart, you can see. And now, if this stock continues to hold below 30, we can see some nice selling pressure here, I would say down towards 21.46, maybe even 20. Just keep an eye on this FCX stock going forward. It could. Most like it could. It looks like it may uh, underperform the market. I mean, for this for this quarter coming up here, because this thing is not looking good on the uh, weekly time frame, and then on the monthly time frame, you can see the pattern a little, pattern a little bit cleaner here. You got your left shoulder, you got your head, and you got your little double right shoulder that form because they tried to break down right here, but then they bought it right back up. But again, holding below 30, this chart could be uh, very damaged. All right, so keep an eye on that stock there. Another copper stock that you can always take a look at is SCCO. Um, a lot of people trade the FCX, though, so I would focus on the FCX and watch that one. All right, what else we're going to take a look at? Let's go and take a look at crude oil, starting off with the crude oil futures. All right, and I want to take a look at this monthly chart. You guys recall I mentioned the fact that the that the uh, crude oil has been in, in this, is in this nice little uh, triangle pattern right here. All right, and if we break below this triangle pattern, we could get some nice selling pressure all the way back down towards 75. All right, I also mentioned the fact that I was looking for crude oil to make a nice move or a big move at least by the end of the second quarter. And you can see they sucked in a lot of people to the long side that were buying off these key trend line levels. All right, and now we have not been able to break above this 98. So that puts this at risk because now if you think about it we're at the top of a resistance trend line and then we could draw a little parallel trend line down here and if we were to break below this little triangle pattern here and then break below 85 we could see some uh, some nasty action in crude oil to the downside alright so watch this key 85 level watch that key 98 level that's a range you want to be working off of right now if you are a crude oil trader or you trade um, the crude oil futures or if you trade the USO, you definitely want to keep an eye on this chart and that pattern that we have forming right there. Taking a look at the weekly chart with the triangle action on it. All right, you can see we're coming back down towards the bottom of the range, which lines up with the 85 level. All right, we had this little key trend line that we broke above right here. We broke above that trend line right here. All right, well, we tried to break above the trend line right there. We actually broke above the trend line at the start of the year. We came back, back test held on the weekly chart. We rallied all the way back up to 98, double topped. And now we're back at that trend line for another back test. And um, if this back test does not hold, we'll be looking for that move back towards, I would say, uh, 84. And then if we break below 84, look for 80. And then 75. I mean, <coughs> crude oil right now is pretty interesting. It's one of the commodities right now that are trying to hold up. And um, there you go. Let's go and take a look at the daily chart. Daily chart got rejected at 98 three weeks ago. It's been in a nice little downtrend. One thing that you could draw in right here on your chart is a little downward trend line to kind of gauge when it could turn around. Put that right there. Draw like a little parallel trend line from this little lows that we made right here. And there you go. You have a little road map to work off of right there. If we break over 89, look for a move back up towards 92. If we hold below 89, look for this to trade sideways and possibly trend back down towards the bottom of these lows right here around 85, then 84. And I know a lot of you guys watch the ETF instead of watching the crude oil futures because some of you guys don't trade the futures so you guys like to watch the USO so it's going to take a look at the USO. USO is holding some nice support around 31 
all right I mean, if we break below 31 let's go ahead and take a look at this monthly chart first sorry about that monthly chart sideways all right weekly chart sideways at the bottom of the range here key level to watch on this is 30 again right now we're holding that little 31 dollar support level and if we break below 31 then we got 30 we break below 30 then we're working off of this uh 28.90 or so and then of course the daily chart which I just showed you guys daily chart uh, a little inside day from Friday's uh, from Thursday's bounce that we try to get here again the commodities are looking weak across the board um, we're really not trading them that much there's not much action in those names unless you want to get whipsawed around because they have been pretty whippy lately alright so that's how crude oil is looking let's go and take a look at the gold miners because I forgot to touch base with the gold miners go back to the gold miners here GDX monthly chart looking real ugly all right, looks like this thing wants to pull all the way back to the 2008 levels around here, around uh, 21, and we're currently at 28.59, which means this thing could move down another seven dollars and 59 cents to the downside before it tries to find some type of real support. You take a look at the monthly chart; the volume has been pretty heavy to the downside for the month. Volume spikes have been increasing here. And just doesn't look like people want to own gold. Take a look at the weekly chart, all right, which is the same levels here on the monthly charts, but we want to gauge a candlestick action on it. And you can see the weekly chart is not looking good as well. The bottom of the range here that we had from that little support range, which is this green range I have highlighted here, is down towards 21. Again, which also lines up with that support from the tr key trend line that we had right here. All right, so not an area not a sector that you want to be invested in right now there's other sectors that are trading much better alright last but not least let's go ahead and take a look at the VIX the volatility index which was up this week hold on one second alright so taking a look at the VIX the VIX was uh, the VIX was up a little bit this week here you can see that we opened up at 1310. We traded to a high of 1826, and we're currently back down at uh, 1497, call it 15. So if this was a range from this low, this high, we retraced about 50% of that action there. So the fact that we held 50% of the week, uh, of the weeks, of this week's action on the VIX is pretty good, because as you guys know, every time the VIX does a nice little breakout. It usually gives it all back as it moves lower. So this time around, if we uh, see a little bit of change in characteristics where we see the VIX actually hold up off these lows that we made right here, that's going to be the first signal that we uh, may start getting some more selling pressure in the markets. And then if we start to hold below some key levels on the daily charts of these different indices, that will be the second clue. And then if we get the rise in the dollar with the weakness in the euro, that would be the third clue. And then the fourth clue would be if we continue to see these uh, key market names or these bellwether stocks uh, move to the downside. That would be like the fourth clue. And put it all together, those are your arguments. Say, okay, maybe it's time for me to start taking off some positions. Maybe it's time for me to start uh, you know, hedging my positions. Or maybe it's time for me to start getting short the market if you are into uh, shorting the market and shorting stocks and making money on the downside of these stocks when they roll over. Because as you guys know, stocks move down much faster than stocks move much faster to the downside than they do when they go higher all right so a lot of people like to short and a lot of people really aren't buying this market up here all right some people are sitting in cash and s or some people are just you know sitting in uh some safer investments aside from stocks like maybe trying to trade the bonds matter of fact speaking of bonds let's going to take a look at that TLT I haven't looked at this chart in a minute here <clears throat> TLT has been rising since uh, March the 11th, those lows that we made right here. Let's take a look at the weekly chart. All right, weekly chart looks a little bit interesting because it could be developing a little head and shoulders pattern right here. This is why I have these lines in here. Possibly, eh, we'll see. Monthly chart, big engulfing candlestick for the month so far, taking out the prior three months highs. And uh, again, we still have about a full nine trading sessions left in the market. Let me count here. Let's see, one, two, three, four, 
four, five, six, seven. We have about seven trading days left in the month. All right, and so far this candle is looking bullish, and at the same time it's breaking down out of this little downward bullish channel that's in play from this little upward channel that we have right here. So in fact, this could be a entry for some people that are looking to get out of equities and try to protect some of their capital and move into bonds. So we definitely want to keep an eye on this TLT on this weekly time frame, and I'll keep you guys posted on that. So let's go ahead and talk about some stock charts, starting off with Apple. All right, Apple's been breaking down. Uh, they have earnings coming out next week, Tuesday on the 23rd. Had a little bounce on Friday, but again, this chart has a ugly head and shoulders pattern on the daily time frame here with the measured target of 370. All right, on Friday, we hit a low of 385, so there's still 15 more dollars to the downside if this pattern that we have from this little measured head and shoulders pattern right here it plays out. 15 points, I mean 50 points. 50 points takes us down at 370. Amazon, Amazon's been trying to hang in there. As far as some of these big cap technology stocks, Amazon's really just trading in a range between 250-283 and this little short-term resistance high right here around 275. All right, uh, may pull back a bit. You know, if the market was to pull back some more, and this stock wasn't to go down or wasn't to break below, didn't break below these uh, 252-83s, call it 253. Um, you know, it could be a nice little buy right here. We'll have to wait and see. Gauge that. Again, IBM. Got smashed on Friday from the earnings report. Uh, next real level support on this stock is in down to like around 185. It's a little key low inflection that it made back here in November. Uh, keep an eye on this stock. Stock does not look good. If we could break back, if we can get back above 197.50 and hold, that would be pretty good. But at the same time, now we're back inside this big range, and we're we already closed. I would say below the 50% level of that range so therefore the next target would be down here towards 185 if those sellers were to continue coming in and shorting the stock uh, this also has been the highest volume spike that it got on Friday it did 18 million 848,883 shares and that has been the highest volume spike I've seen on this chart here let me take this to a two-year chart two-year daily all right, we haven't seen that much volume at all for the past two years. Let me go back three years. All right, even three years, we haven't seen that much volume. So this stock did a lot of volume on Friday. And this is actually pretty interesting now that I look at it because that doesn't look good. This could be telling us something that uh, we need to look more into. Maybe uh, computer sales are slowing down. I know it had to do with a lot, uh, you know, a lot of the um, revenue that they lost had to do from the consulting services. So that's something you want to read into over the weekend. You may want to take a look at the earnings report and see what's going on there with that uh, company. Either way, not a name you want to be involved in. doesn't look good at all. Uh, let's go and take a look at the financials, starting off with Goldman Sachs. Just run through a couple names here. I know the video is already long enough, so bear with me. Uh, Goldman Sachs breaking below the, all of the short-term moving averages, actually starting to break below the 100-day 100, the 100 simple and exponential moving average as well. Next target's down here towards 200, around 130, 163. Okay, and again, this thing has no, uh, this stock has no consolidation from the run-up that we had from January all the way up to uh, February. So therefore, this thing could just make another smooth move back down because there's no price congestion for it to try to stabilize around. All right, so keep that in mind. I actually mentioned that a couple weeks ago, and you guys can see how every time it moves down, it has some nice, uh, you know, there's some nice long candles to the downside, at least for this week. And that's because there's really no support on the side. This is just a nice little float up. All right, so it could be a nice little float right back down. Uh, Bank of America, BAC. All right, BAC still holding that 11 price level. And 1245, call it 1250, still resistance. So just chop it around right here. Nothing, nothing going on in that name. If you ask me, uh, JP Morgan, JPM. Let's see what JPM's doing at the bottom of the little range here, holding above this key 47 level. Uh, if we can hold this 47 and stabilize a bit above it, we can maybe make a move back up towards the top of the range around 49.50, or at least kind of the midpoint around 48.50. Uh, 
something you want to keep on watch there. The financials were weak, all right, along with most of the general sectors. But um, again, we'll see how those act next week. Aside from that, the video is already long enough. We'll go over some more stuff tomorrow night in the chat room. Make sure you tune in mywallstreettv.com Sunday night, 9.30 p.m. I'll be in there with my partner, and we'll take a look at some more stocks and see which ones are setting up. I do have some names that uh, are some trade ideas for us for Monday morning, but again, I'll go over those tomorrow night, so make sure you be there. And have a great weekend. I'll catch you guys later. Cheers.